Hi, I'm Bob. Thank you so much for watching the videos on the solutions to problems and computer exercises in the textbook Introductory Econometrics, a modern approach, the seventh edition. Let's solve the computer exercises for chapter 11. Further issues in using OLS with time series data. Here's the first exercise. In part one, find the first order autocorrelation in the log per capita investment. Find the autocorrelation after linearly descending log investment. Do the same for the log price. Which of the two series may have a unit root? We first declare the data to be time series data using the TS set command, meaning the time series set. We write the time variable year after the TS set command. After declaring time series data, we can use all the time series commands in the following analysis. The command call gram provides autocorrelations, partial autocorrelations, and other statistics for the variables. We use the legs option to specify the first leg. The first order autocorrelation in the log per capita investment is 0 0.59. We can also use the correlate command to calculate the correlation between the variable and its leg. It is 0 0.64. The results are not the same because the calculation method is different. Next, we detrain the data. To do that, we regress the log per capita investment on the time trend t and obtain the residuals. The residuals have parceled out the time trend effect, so the data are linearly detrended. The first order autocorrelation is 0 0.48. We do the same for the log price. The first order autocorrelation in log price is 0 0.90, and that in the detrending log price is 0 0.82. A high first order correlation suggests a unit root. The log price may have a unit root. Impact two. Based on your findings in part 1, estimate the equation, interpret the coefficient beta 1, and determine whether it is statistically significant. We use the regress command to estimate the model by OLS. To interpret the coefficients, we can summarize the variables and check their units. The coefficient beta 1 means a 1 percentage point increase in price is estimated to increase the investment by 3.9% above its trend. The effect is statistically significant at the 1 percent level. In part 3, linearly Detrend log per capita investment and use the detrended version as the dependent variable in the regression from part 2. What happens to R squared? After detrending the log per capita investment, the part of it that can be explained by the trend has already been ruled out. So when we use it as the dependent variable, the explanatory variable t no longer has explanatory power with a tiny t statistic. As a consequence, the r squared becomes smaller 
than that from Part Two. In Part Four, use delta log investment as the dependent variable. How do your results change from Part Two? Is the time trend still significant? Why or why not? The coefficient on the delta log price becomes statistically insignificant at the 10% level against a two-sided alternative. The time trend is not significant because the difference will remove the time trend. Suppose there is a time trend when the outcome variable and the explanatory variable are the log terms. The differencing between time t and time t minus one. Results in the delta log terms, but it also eliminates the time trend. Let's solve computer exercise two. In example eleven point seven, define the growth in hourly wage and output per hour as the change in the natural log. Consider a simple extension of the model estimated in eleven point two nine. This allows an increase in productivity growth to have both a current and lagged effect on wage growth. In part one, is the lagged value of growth in output per hour statistically significant? We regress the wage growth. On the output growth and its first leg, we put the time series operator capital L dot before a variable to obtain its first leg. Both the current and the lagged values of growth in output per hour are statistically significant. A one percent increase in productivity is estimated to increase. Wages by 0.73 percent in the short run and 1.2 percent in the long run. In part two, if beta one plus beta two equals one, a permanent increase in productivity growth is fully passed on in higher wage growth after one year. Test the law hypothesis that beta one plus beta two equals one against the two-sided alternative. As usual, we use the test command for the F test or the Lincoln command for the T test. Both tests give a p-value of zero point three six six, indicating we. Could not reject the null hypothesis that the sum of the beta one and beta two is one. Or we can use the method introduced in the textbook to do the test. It gives the same result. In part three, does the second leg of the output growth need to be in the model? We add the second leg to the model and find it not statistically significant with a p-value of zero point six eight five. We should drop it. Another way is to use the VARSOC command to choose the optimal legs based on four information criteria. All statistics select one leg. The second leg is not needed. 
Let's find answers to computer exercise three. In part one, in example eleven point four, it may be that the expected value of the return at time t given past returns is a quadratic function of return at time t minus one. To check this possibility, we estimate model. Here are the OLS estimates. In part two, state and test the law hypothesis that the current expected value of return does not depend on the return at time t minus one. What do you conclude? The null hypothesis is that beta one and beta two are both zero. We can use the test command to do the f test for their joint significance. The p value is zero point one two. They are jointly insignificant at the ten percent level. We could not reject the null hypothesis that both coefficients are zero. In other words, there is no evidence to reject the efficient markets hypothesis. In part three, drop the squared term from the model, but add the interaction term between returns at time t minus one and t minus two. Now test the efficient markets hypothesis. We generate the second leg of return and the interaction term between the first leg and the second leg. The F test. Gives a p-value of zero point one seven, so we could not reject the efficient markets hypothesis at the ten percent level. In part four, what do you conclude about predicting weekly stock returns based on past stock returns? Based on the F tests from various specifications, we find no. Significant evidence that past returns help predict current stock returns. Let's do computer exercise four. In part one, in example eleven point five, we assume that the natural rate of unemployment is constant. An alternative form of the expectations augmented Phillips curve. Allows the natural rate of unemployment to depend on past levels of unemployment. In the simplest case, the natural rate at time t equals unemployment at time t minus one. If we assume adaptive expectations, we obtain a Phillips curve where inflation and unemployment are in first differences. Estimate this model and discuss the sign, size, and statistical significance of beta one hat. The estimated equation is as follows: a one point increase in unemployment is associated with a zero point eight point decrease in inflation. The coefficient is statistically significant at the one percent level. It is evidence of the trade-off between unemployment and inflation. In part two, which model fits the data better, eleven point one nine, or the model from part one? Explain. The R squared in eleven point one nine is. 0.104, whereas the R squared in the regression in part one is 0.135. According to this goodness of fit measure, the model in part one is better. Thank you so much for doing the computer exercises with me today. See you tomorrow. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.